Um, so there was uh, some talk about uh, <coughs> removing file systems from the kernel, and also um, this uh, uh, unprivileged mo uh, so, uh, or um, uh, security issues with uh, mounting file systems by in, uh, user namespaces and that sort of thing. And my idea would be that uh, uh, we run a kernel in a VM just for uh, mounting a file system. And so, and, and mount that with Fuse. <laughs> and so uh, we, could, we could run uh, old kernels, which support, still, still support all of the file systems we want to remove. And uh, uh, so I see what you're saying. So you like pass through from the VM as a fuse mount yeah. for any old file systems that we remove that for users that might still have it. Uh, Christian, are you in here? Oh yeah. Okay, good. I just want you to hear what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that we are extremely conservative when it comes to removing file systems when we shouldn't be. I definitely agree with Linus's point of view that we shouldn't be breaking user space, but like the NTFS thing is a really good example of this, is like if it's been in the tree for like three months and people just disappeared, uh, delete it. Like if somebody wants it, they come back and they do the whole thing and then they promise that they're actually gonna stick around. Uh, I think RiserFS is a different beast, but like a lot of these other file systems, like I think we should be extremely extremely aggressive about deleting things we just don't care about anymore because if the if there's a if there's one or two users great that's what stable kernels are for they can or they can buy rel or they can do literally anything else but for the upstream kernel if it if there's no maintainer and nobody's using it let's delete it i don't understand why we have to keep all this code around yeah but 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 it still could be some file system image lying around that somebody wants to mount they and but but you but you can't use it because uh, you, uh, uh, GCC has gone, uh, uh, so so you can't compile it anymore. But if if we still meet, if we have a certain kernel which we maintain with all all these file systems uh, in it uh, that that still compiles, at least the file systems still compile with the recent GCC, then uh, that would uh, I guess solve that issue. But not sure, that's still, that's still some maintenance. I, I wonder, so the, I think the only way we can, so with the file systems that we just mounted and it haven't been upstream for long, I think that would make sense. It, the only thing that we would need, we would basically need to ask uh, Linus at Maintainer Summit or whatever and be like, hey, wh how would you feel about this if we were to switch to this type of policy? But in general, I think it makes sense because it's really, uh, it's a burden, I think, on 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 the mailing list. It's a burden on the uh, on the other maintainers. If just patches and sysboard reports keep accumulating for file systems that have been there for a very short time, <laughs> rather than using a VM, UML might make a better option. Uh, UML, user mode Linux. I'm, I'm not sure UML is uh, still is it still working. Well, in in the older kernels you're talking about, it might be. Okay. Yeah, but so it's, it's, a, it's a thought. Okay, the other thing is um, uh, um, so mounting uh, file system Im images, uh, arbitrary images without any checking. Just the user wants to mount uh, VFAT or anything. That, that it's, uh, that, that's another, uh, another use case for this. Right. So it, I think that if someone was willing to implement some sort of, you know, run UML in a VM or some other sort of kernel in a VM, whatever, to ease the fear that there might be potential user pain. It may make it easier for Linus to agree to remove a file system, uh, you know, with extreme prejudice. There may be disagreement in this room of people of goodwill about whether or not that is strictly speaking necessary, um, and we could have that debate. Um, 
I do think that UML may be an interesting path forward because UML works well enough for KUnit, right? So I suspect, you know, KUnit hasn't, you know, UML hasn't completely bit rotted, at least for x86, right. um, because that's what KUnit uses. And that might be an interesting way of, you know, we somehow have to feed the block I.O. requests in through the VM into UML or the kernel or what, whatever kernel we use, and then, you know, feed it back out through uh, some sort of vert I.O. into the fuse uh, on the host kernel. So there's real technical work there. I think it'd be really, really cool if it was done just so that we don't have to have that discussion about, you know, is it realistic that you know people ha be able to build an LTS kernel from two years ago um, if that's the only way they can get a particular file system? And you know, because the reality is, I can't build. I think it's 415 or 4 414. There are older kernels that are like not buildable with GCC anymore. Um, and so, yeah, that's a concern. Um, whether or not that should stop us from removing a file system, and I agree that RiserFS is probably a little bit different from NTFS3 about what the decision matrix should be. Um, but like, if you think you can actually do the fuse thing, I think that'd be really cool, right? That just from a technology perspective, and it just short circuits that entire argument. Yeah, so that, and this <laughs> is the thing. Just for a second. Oh. I, I, you have mentioned uh, UML being not entirely bit rotten on x86. Uh, just a reality check, it never existed out, outside of x86. Um, the last time I heard this argument come up was uh, several years ago when we were here in Vancouver for a plumber's conference and we were talking about um, accessing files that we would, or file systems we would find in USB drives we picked up off the street. Um, and the solution offered then was why not start up a VM uh, and export the the uh, unknown file system via a shared network file system like SMB or NFS? Um, you don't have to deal with fuse or write any new code. You just mount it in that file system and export it. Unfortunately, USB drive picked on the street might do uh, rather unpleasant things to you uh, simply when you stick it in without any movement. Yeah. Uh, so like kind of the other thing that I'm getting at here, right, is like we we use the specter of unknown user to avoid making this decision all of the time. And I'm quite tired of using arbitrary thing ar arbitrary fears with no data backing it. So I think RiserFS, again, is a clear exception because there are real users. There are enterprise users that are still on RiserFS. Great, we don't eat that guy. But like, we can easily like, go look at SLES or OpenSUSE or Fedora configs and see what file systems are actually turned on and delete everything that's not turned on because chances are there are no users. Of course, if something the user complains, then we need to have a conversation, right? But like we constantly use the specter of some unknown user and when they're, and we pretend like there's no other option. Okay, we can't build 414, but we can build 6.2. And so like we, we eat something right now and we find out that there's a user, then we can decide, okay, do we care about that user? Because they have 6.2 and literally many other options. And I, now I do agree with you, Ted, that like this is a cool technology of like being able to export things and like solve this problem in general. But at the same time, like I am so tired of being like, well, there might be a user. Yeah, I, okay. There's lots of other options. I mean, this is a slightly different uh, scenario, of course, but we do it with architectures, right? We, at least and from regular intervals, we keep, let's remove this architecture, and then the users will pop up and they will tell us, no, you you can't, but you know that's how we got rid of a bunch of architectures over the years. And it, it's kind of similar, right? CPU stopped getting produced, but still there is some university who still has like two machines in their basement that they whip out for a Christmas party or so. They can use an old kernel.
There is one slight difference you need to consider, which is whether the file system is usable as a root device. So if it's not, like NTFS, I don't think anybody will care. You just want access to your data. But the problem with root device file systems is you can't upgrade once the file system is gone. If you're using it for some sort of dev test, then you actually have to sort of re-image your system, which is considered to be a really nasty operation by some people. I mean, yes, but that's again, that's a, I think the argument of the uh, the invisible user, the hidden user, like who's going to run a riser FS file system and then upgrade to a butter FS root file system. Right? Yeah, so actually, yeah, I was deprecating the riser FS stuff uh, about a year ago. And uh, so I've got a couple of users complaining, hey, I'm still using it. But basically, all of two of them were kind of fine with, with the statement, OK, but, uh, you know, so we will remove it in two years. And do you know that, you know, you, you are running a code base that has so many security bugs that you probably don't want to think about, think about it and say, OK, yeah, I thought that when it is in kernel, it must be still fine and maintained. So, OK, thanks for the notice. I'm going to switch to something else. So, like, all these users, bear, like, when they are given sufficiently advanced notice, they are willing to transition their machines to something else. So, so I believe it is really the path forward to kind of make light noise, you know, this code base is really bad, just use something else and give them like better suggestions so they can use. So, so with RiserFS, I'm still kind of confident that you know, we can follow the deprecation notice and remove it like in one year, or I don't know how long we set it, but about in one year, I believe we should be able to remove it. Yeah, I, I think ultimately, though, uh, it would be useful for us to get a clear statement from Linus. So I think that probably is the next step, whether we do it via email or we say, you know, this is something we want to queue up for the maintainer summit. Um, because, you know, I was against NTFS3 going in. Um, it wasn't up to me. And it's like, okay, it's in, um, you know, I'll, I'll step back and, you know, have some popcorn and watch. Uh, but like, so I, I have absolutely no objections if NTFS3 were ejected tomorrow. If it would make it easier for Linus to agree to remove it by having this cool technology, I'm all for it because I never wanted NTFS3 in the kernel in the first place. But again, it's not up to me, right? Ultimately, uh, I think we need to escalate this to Linus, and if we're willing to have a sense of the file system developers in the room say, we should be a little bit more aggressive about being willing to remove deprecated file systems like we remove deprecated architectures, you know, I'll certainly sign on the dotted line for that. <laughs> so yeah, one, I think this, this is, is what I'm... Oh. Go ahead, Derek. So... I was talking with Kent about an hour ago about this, and I we I was thinking if there was some way for for me to pass IOMAP request or IOMAP mappings through views or something like that to IOMAP, I was thinking like why can't we just get rid of XFS from the kernel? And you know my my, my other stupid th end of the day thought was could we have an FS staging? Yeah, I, th or that's put, put things in there and kick them out in six months if they're not making progress and generating too many sysbot reports. I that had been I, tried. Yeah. It was in driver stage and it was lost around. Uh, it stuck around. I'd, I'll skip uh, the adjectives I would like to apply to it, uh, but uh, put it that way. It's something that sticks to the boot cell. And it's yeah. stuck there for quite a while. It had been hard to boot out of the kernel. Right, and I, I think this is the thing is like, as a community, we've all been kind of willing to like accept that there's like, okay, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But we're finding out that it is a big deal. And I think that as a community, you know, file system maintainers, uh, VFS maintainers, I'll go to Linus and say, listen, uh, we would be a lot more aggressive about removing stuff. I think Linus would be like, okay, that's reasonable. And I think that we just need to be unified in this, this idea that like, okay, 
there is a real cost to carrying this shit around. Let's be a lot more aggressive about evicting it when it's clearly getting in our way. Because, yeah, it makes us look bad. First one on staging. If you have a file system staging, you will have staging for entry to file systems as well, and you've lost control of what file systems go in. And the second one, to Ted's point, is I really don't think you want to persuade Linus to make a statement. I think you want to take a statement to Linus and tell him this is it. That, that's exactly what I'm saying. Is like I don't think Linus cares. To, I mean, he does, but like I think he's going to, in this particular case, he would defer to all of us. And if all of us come up to him and say, we want to get rid of stuff as quickly as possible and be a lot more aggressive about when we bring in things and there's clear failure of maintainership, NTFS 3, or you know, there's clearly no users, or there's just, if there are users, we just simply don't care because it's too old, it's unmaintained, and it's causing us problems. Let's get rid of it, and I think that Linus would be okay with it. Eric's it's, okay with it. I mean, it's also with the understanding, all, uh, you know, the pull request to remove that code, and then you might it might get reverted, but uh, so what? I mean, it happens uh, all the time. I think it would make sense. Chuck just asked for a short list. I think JFS, ROMFS, RAMFS maybe, um, HFS. RAMFS? Are you kidding me? Not, not, ra not RAMFS, cr the compressed thing. Oh. C or RAMFS, sorry. Uh, fucking what else? God, now I'm my blind, my mind went blind. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch. So NTFS, like. I mean, I, I can sit down and look at the list, but like, you know, we know what we use regularly, right? Like ButterFS, ext4, XFS, NFS, uh, SIFs, uh, SoneFS, F2FS. <laughs> well, I just saw it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. There are strange folks who, use, who like AFS. AFS. We actually did get rid of ZXFS, oh, right? the Veritas one. Yeah, the Veritas one, sweet. <laughs> so I mean, like, I feel like, you know, we probably have, what, 10, 12 that are actively maintained and actively used, and the rest we can get rid of. How much ma of ma maintenance do you need for Minix FS, for example? How much maintenance? Yeah, I don't know. How much maintenance does it take to keep, say, Minix FS alive? I have no idea. I think the price is it's usually paid. It's not a great burden, from what I can tell. Yeah. Until the you know, SysBot report comes along and you really have to, uh, yeah, yeah, probably also for you it might be different, I think, because you're so experienced that for you it might be obvious to maintain them. But the thing is, if we have SysBot reports for these file systems coming in and then fixing these SysBot, rep uh, SysBot reports and bugs, who is actually doing it apart from maybe you and if I know what's going on sometimes, uh, sometimes myself and they just accumulate if you look into the SysBot instance and it, you know. I don't know. Uh, in my and experience, SysBot reports are often as not uh, random garbage. Okay. So I, I think the other thing is like we're starting to get to this point where we're having like major API changes and propagating these across all the different file systems is becoming a huge pain in the ass. The new mounted API, IO map, like there are big changes that we are halfway through and likely won't have somebody to do for all these other things. So we're just also, not, we're not only carrying around these dead file systems, we're also carrying around all of this dead code and all these dead interfaces that new developers are gonna come upon and be like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to use. And so like, there's a real value in cleaning these up because they can also then clean up all these dead interfaces that we don't need anymore. So, yeah. I, I was just gonna refer back to something earlier. You know, if it may, 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 maybe SysBot is the answer. <laughs> if, if, if the SysBot reports are piling up for a file system and you know, there's no particular motion on many of them, that maybe that's how we know it's time to get rid of that particular file system. I was yeah. wondering how many of the buffer head file systems can we get rid of? Just to simplify the buffer head 
If, if the answer is 23, we can just get rid of buffer heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suspect we can't give the ISO 9660, maybe. <sighs> but if that's the only one left. James says it's an archiving problem. Well, it, it's an archiving problem in that <coughs> the archives get annoyed because they store things on DVDs that they were promised will rest, the data there will rest for years. You get to it 50 years later and they can't find anybody who will read it. So if ISO 990 still works and it's not a burden, just leave it because somebody will complain by the time all of us are dead and there'll be no one to fix it. So it sounds like the laser disc problem that you had in the yeah. But UK. Yeah, I'll also note though that for a number of these file systems, in particular ISO 9660, that's a classic why isn't there a fuse FS for the damn thing, right? Because we don't care about performance for ISO no, 9660. No, I agree. So Ted right? will write the fuse FS and you can remove it. Well, yeah, but yeah. I mean, does it even have to be um, a, a file system? I mean, it's ISO 9660, it's an archive format. Why is it not simply a TAR format, right? If you can use TAR to extract an ISO 9660 to your current file system, isn't that perfect? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there is a Fuse ISO 9660 already. So I, I don't know how well it works, work. but like it exists. Yep. Um, Delete it. Does it yeah. work for root? Yeah. So the, yeah. Exists good enough. Yeah. Does it work as root file system? <laughs> yeah. Fuse based the, setup. Yeah. The, the other thing maybe to consider here also is it's not just SysBot reports. There are a number of these file systems that actually still have um, XFS test support, and every once in a while I'll run XFS tests on some of these ancient file systems just for grins, and it's like, gee, that's nice. There's over like 150 different failures. I, uh, I ran it on uh, RiserFS as part of my, because I had this uh, insane idea that uh, for every file system uh, that is runnable via XFS tests, I bugged Amir about this on WhatsApp a lot. Uh, I uh, uh, ran it, and it was just like complete, complete mess, like kernel crashes, everything failed, you didn't know what f from run to run different failures, it's really not great. Uh, yeah, I, uh, the last time I tried running UDF with XFS tests, the kernel crashed. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> Look, the, the, the thing is here, if you're doing a um, VFS change uh, or uh, folio changes, for example, and you're making a change to a file system that you cannot test, then it's kind of wrong. Yeah. It's kind of better to remove it. <laughs> but yeah, it's not very practical, but that's the, basically the correct answer for development. It's not good to change code that you cannot test. But Is something like ISO 9660, these, these read-only file systems, or are they something that's actually easier to convert to IOMAP? because you don't have to worry about all the write back stuff, all the synchronization stuff. C can you just, instead of using BV, just k like a buffer and read into it? Well, actually, uh, actually what, what makes read-only file systems particularly good from a IOMAP conversion point of view is you don't have to understand what get block with the create flag set to true does. <laughs> you just have to yeah. understand what get block does in terms of getting a block rather than actually trying to allocate new blocks, yeah. uh, which is what I've always found hardest about trying to convert something to IOMAP. Um, I think the biggest problem is something like EXT2, <laughs> and thank you, Johan, for volunteering to take that on, but where, where, where you actually do still want to pres preserve the read-write nature of it. Yeah, the, the one thing I was going to say about EXT2 is I think EXT2 being well-maintained as a simple file system is one of the best arguments for why we don't need to keep MinixFS, right? The, the original reason why you know, we would point at MinixFS was, okay, you're writing a simple file system, MinixFS is what you should look at. I think these days, if we want a simple file system that people should look at, we should point them at ext2, and that's one of the reasons why I'm really glad that it's going to IOFS, because it's like, it's a well-maintained simple file system using the modern interfaces, right? Now, MinixFS may have sentimental value because it was the first file system in Linux, blah, blah, blah. That's not a technical discussion, and 
like I don't care. We have um, and we don't we can't even run uh, Minix uh, binaries anymore. I think because we took out a dot out. So that's a sentimental attachment. Um, but like yeah, we can talk to Linus about it. But I I would be all in favor of taking out Minix. It, it probably isn't that bad, but. I don't think it has a reason to exist anymore. Right, and, th and this is sort of the, like, There are blue button clothes. Sorry. Say again, Al. Al, can you repeat that? There are folks who are dual booting uh, Minix and uh, Linux, strangely enough, because there had been, for real, uh, patches supporting the new version of file system, Minix, Minix 3, uh, that went into the tree doesn't seem to be particularly obnoxious. So somebody cares about that. Had been some years ago, I don't remember when, but strangely enough, it's not entirely yeah, and Unfortunately, there is actually an active Minix 3 community. I think it's pretty small. Um, and I didn't even realize that they were actually interested in doing Linux file exchange, but whatever. Um. I mean, it doesn't have to be like Minix 3 is maybe just a not, we don't need to get hooked up about a specific file system. If we find out that we need to keep it, then that's perfectly fine. I mean, this really isn't a story about uh, ripping out people, like the file systems out of people's hands. It's a story about trying to get rid of legacy code, and if anybody complains and has valid complaints, then we'll happily uh, revert it or leave it in. That's at least how I would uh, how I would see it. Can we actually reduce some of the read-write file systems for really old legacy formats to just read-only file systems and just simplify them a lot? I, I mean, I would be, you know, if that's like an intermediate option, I mean, I prefer to just r remove, obviously. But like, I think as long as we, I don't know. See, like, this is the problem, right? Is like, there's still things like the amount API changes. And IOMAP, okay, is easier in this case, but what next API change are we going to have that suddenly is a pain? And if, and additionally, if we have no way to test it, oh, I know. <laughs> but additionally, if we simply don't have any way to test it, and we're, all, we're all around here running around updating APIs, and we just simply break the file system because, like, we can't test it, like, that's not great either, so. I'll note for architectures, that actually has been a feature where we accidentally break an architecture and then we point out, we broke this architecture three years ago, no one stepped forward to complain, and then that makes it a whole lot easier to remove the architecture. <laughs> and also, do we remove things that we don't have a MicroFest in the FSIC for? Um, I uh, that, that for I feel example, is a MKFS for UFS is quite available, not packaged. Of course, uh, these folks have it. It doesn't work for things like um, ISO file systems because they have CD record which does exactly that, namely creating an ISO without it being an MKFS. Yeah, I, I think that's sort of a special case and you know, we're some of them like, you know, I have no idea whether or not there are anyone who's using, you know, the QNX6 file system for interchange with QNX or BFS, right? Um, you know, I'm pretty sure ADFS probably doesn't have a whole lot of users because, like, OSF1 is kind of dead, dead, dead. But, and you know. Um, wh wh <laughs> while at it, look at the partition schemes, please. If you kill the file system, you might as well kill the partition scheme. Okay, I think we're all in agreement here. We're all just kind of going around in circles. So let's wrap this one up. Um, does anybody else have any other lightning talks? I know, Chuck, you're still waiting. Do you want, are you good with who's in the room now? Yeah, okay, cool. You're up. Yeah. Uh, this talk is for Christian and Al and Andrew Morton. Where did Christian go? Oh, he moved. <laughs> um, the issue is uh, tempfs, uh, stable directory cookies. 
Um, people have heard me preach about this before. Um, on the mailing list, the, the issue is that when you delete or create a file in the tempfs directory, the uh, the offsets change. Um, and there's a sort of a simple cursor scheme that allows applications to find their way around with get dense, uh, at least when they're accessing tempfs directories locally, but over NFS, that doesn't work because every reader uh, on an NFS server opens the file and then closes it, which throws away the cursor. Um, my proposed solution was to replace the cursor mechanism with something that is an X-ray based uh, mechanism for finding dentries um, based on their offset and then every file gets an offset that is the same for as long as the directory lives and for tempfs that's as long as the system is booted. Um, there's been some grumbling about doing this. Um, it looks maybe more complex than people have stomach for. Um, so I'm looking for feedback about what might be an alternate uh, approach that is simpler and performs well. Um, another suggestion was maybe we should, instead of changing tempfs, we should actually plumb all of this into libfs, which is why well, I'm kind of looking at Christian. Um, we can put it into libfs, but... Go ahead. We can put it into libfs, but uh, there is no real difference because tempfs is mostly <coughs> use of uh, libfs functions with the distinction. It, well, it uses a lot of the simple calls, but there are certain ones that, um, like tempfs has its own rename, um, and that, that could get a little sticky. But it, tempfs uses the simple fs, read dir, and dir lseq. Yes. Yep. Yes. Is there another so, comment? Um, you want something like uh, Accelerate that to directory uh, referent to what the interests of children. Yes, that's exactly what I did. Yeah, and and it works well. Um, there are some performance regressions I have to look into, but um, I seem to have addressed all of the functional problems with it. Um, maybe not all the political problems with it. sounds fine to me and makes sense to put it into libfs i think yeah even though i'm not super experienced in in this area but what did the uh, tempfs maintainer say it's, which is you probably right uh. <laughs> hugh didn't comment on it andrew suggested it was a little uh complicated looking uh and it is file system specific code. Maybe it's a little outside the wheelhouse of the MM folks, and maybe they would rather see it done in libfs as well, just because that becomes not their problem. Okay. Uh, just a sec. So, uh, okay, uh, I have probably uh, not looked uh, at uh, your patches here. Could you remind me of the subject? Subject line you used when posting them, if they uh, can be posted. Yeah, I don't remember the exact subject line, but I can send it to you uh, once we're done talking here. Okay. <clears throat> In principle, I don't see uh, any great problems. I don't know if uh, it's worth uh, actually well, the same uh, logics for uh, Red Deer and uh, friends is used for, uh, unfortunately, for uh, uh, some uh, synthetic file systems, if I recall correct. Yes. TMPFS uh, doesn't have to deal with uh, random changes of uh, directory contents coming out of uh, hell knows what source was uh, 
it's all it, it's all it's all from user group so uh, I would need to uh, actually take a look at uh, horrors like uh, what was that Quiberfest some th there are completely insane uh, specialized file systems so something an infinite band I'm sorry uh, which are using that and uh, figuring out when and how uh, they change the uh, directories is not something I would wish um, upon anyone. Right. Uh, so it's maybe dev. it's uh, better to... Uh, I, I have no problem with that being in uh, Libifus. Uh, just uh, not replacing uh, the existing variant. Uh, one idea there was to actually add a different version of Reader and Dur LC just for the X ray version sure. and then have sure. the uh, the weirder file systems continue to use the simple one that's already in there. Uh, how do you get from uh, I to X ray? The X ray is file system specific. Yes, it is. So, uh, how would those library help us deal with that? Uh, I'm because not sure. What we, ha what we have there right now uh, can be directly used as instances of uh, get the answer. And, okay, iterate and uh, LC. If it becomes a helper function that should be uh, called by that file systems instance of uh, of LSIC for directories, given it some kind of callback or, or something like that, that's uh, a bit of uh, additional headache. It, <clears throat> it's really a situation that was in the details. I would need to take a good look at uh, your page set and see if uh, how widely can that be used without excessive headache? Yeah, fair enough. Um, my patch set is currently uh, Shemem FS specific. Um, I haven't actually done anything with LibFS itself, um, but we could think about that offline. Sure. Thank you. I obviously have no problem with that. All right, great. Does anybody else have any other lightning talk topics they'd like to discuss? Excellent. Oh, Willie. <laughs> I, I, I tried to sneak this into the MM track, but uh, Michael gave the slot to Andrew instead. Um, I want to reduce the amount of support we have for high mem in the kernel. Um, like when, when high mem was originally introduced, we were talking about like x86 servers with eight gig or theoretically up to 64 gig of memory, but I don't think that, that ever works. So we're talking about like 32 bit x86 systems. Um, these days, like if you, I, I don't think anybody sells a 32 bit x86 system anymore and the 32 bit x86 kernel is almost unmaintained. So really the only 32 bit systems we actually care about, I think are ARM based. And even then, it's really hard to buy a 32-bit ARM system with an amount of memory that causes you to actually need to use high mem. Quark. Intel does not still sell Quark. It, it, Quark was, was an experiment, and it failed. I have one. <laughs> I've, I've never used it. Just for the record, Fedora just recently disabled 32-bit uh, ARM altogether in Fedora 38. So. Yeah, I mean, for, for a while you've been able to use a 32-bit user space with a 64-bit kernel, and, and you know, I'm not, I'm not proposing to do anything about that. I'm really talking about systems that can only run a 32-bit kernel. Um, I, I, don't, I don't propose entirely killing high mem, um, uh, because, I mean, if you have more than, I think, about 800 megabytes of memory, you do still need it. And you, and you can buy, like, a, like an ARM router or something with a gigabyte of RAM, and it would be nice, you know, to still use the page cache and still use anonymous memory. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about keeping those, but I do want to start removing support for things like page tables in HiMem because that actually gives us a bit of software simplification. I want to remove um, keeping directories in HiMem. I want to uh, other file system metadata. Just get that crap out of HiMem because it's, it's just complicating us and it's not helping any users. James, you had a little thing. No, it's a curiosity question. So a lot of the HiMAM architectures also support a 4 gig, 4 gig split. It's just supposed to be slower. I think all of them do, in which case can we not just disable HiMAM as a performance optimization and keep the 4 gig, 4 gig spl split? Uh, I don't think ARM supports 4 gig, 4 gig split. Yeah, I mean, oof. I mean, as, as I recall, 4 gig, 4 gig split in x86 was incredibly slow. Like, I mean, not just a little bit slow, but incre like, but benchmarks ran half as fast. Like, it was it was really really bad. <laughs> well, yes, it's those two bit. Who who? But I mean, people people do still buy routers with like a gig of RAM, right? And less than a gig of RAM. So, um, am I hearing any objections to starting this work? No, I, like ButterFS, we went through and just uh, like ripped out the high mem support for our metadata. So like, I, I don't think you're gonna find too much argument here because like, you know, for us it drastically simplified things. And I think that, you know, if anybody else still does it, I don't know if anybody, like, I don't think you're gonna find a lot of resistance to it, right? Because it, like it sucks to do all the KMAP stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, specifically for folios, right? Because you can't k-map an entire folio, and it, it just makes everything more complicated. And it's like, why, 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 why are we straining so hard at something that matters to so so few people? Yeah, I like. I mean, I I know we did it because it just was silly, right? And so, like, I don't think you're gonna find a lot of people that are gonna complain loudly about it. So I'm all in favor of it. I'm seeing a lot of nodding. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, any last minute lightning talks? Perfect. All right, uh, this one a lot longer than I expected. We're gonna go out here and we're gonna take a group photo. Um, and then we have dinner at 6.30 and it's, I forgot the name of the restaurant. Steamworks, thank you. It's right down the road over here. It, it's on the back of your badge too. It's in the, there's a Google Maps link in the schedule. I cannot stress enough, 6.30. So find something else to do for a while. Go drop your bags off. And it's, it's really close so you can walk to it. Um, but first, out here for the photo. Thanks everybody. <laughs>